Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of WNBL ITV. Darren Boyd and Laurie Chiswick again in the host chairs. And, Loz, it's great to be back. I'm really thrilled that you actually joined me after you uh, were hobnobbing last week at the President's Cup in Melbourne. I was surprised that you've come back down to my level, and I'm thrilled as well. Well, I tell you what, it was a, a great week in Melbourne for the golf, but an equally great week in the WNBL. It was a fantastic week in the WNBL. A couple of upset victories, and, you know, Townsville, maybe they've got the wobbles, and who knows? It's going to be interesting to dissect all those games. Well, you know, the, the wins, the losses, Townsville, probably a bit of back to reality hit yep. them. Um, we know that Sydney lost, but um, let's get right into the reviewing, Darren. Yeah, we will. We'll get into the review in just a moment. But before, we'll remind you, of course, of our social media pages, Facebook and also Twitter. Stay in contact with the WNBL um, and also ourselves. Uh, we have some viewer questions coming up later on, so make sure you get in contact with us and make your thoughts and questions count on WNBL ITV. But, Laurie, let's start our review of last week's matches with our game from Friday night, the ABC match of the week between Danny Nong and Townsville. And it was an interesting one, wasn't it? The, uh, the Townsville fire, well, the first quarter cost them in the end, didn't it? Well, it was a really hyped-up game, Townsville having lost to Sydney the week before and wanting to get back on the winner's list. Really, Danny Nong came out fired up and ready to go. Their defensive intensity in that first half was um, really, really great. It was fantastic, and they got out to a 19-point lead in the second quarter, and I think you and I sort of had a look at each other and thought, oh, no, this could be a dull one. But the fire, the fighting spirit from the girls from Townsville, it was extraordinary. Well, they just kept coming back at them. And uh, the shooting of Michaela Cox, Jess Foley, certainly brought them back into the game and, and uh, put the pressure right back on Danny Nong. The thing that was most noticeable for me is we see Luella Tomlinson making a basket there for the Rangers. It was perhaps the first game this season that Jenna O'Hay and Kathleen McLeod weren't completely dominant. They were, the Danny Nong side were able to get Krista Phillips, Steph Cumming, um, Tomlinson, Al Downey involved at the offensive end, and I think that team production really helped them. Well, certainly Krista Phillips uh, had her best game to date, and she, she's noted for fouling out sometimes, but she, uh, she was able to keep herself on the court and stay there, and, and she had a huge impact on the game. As I thought Steph Cumming, I thought that was her best shooting game by far. All right, so the Danny Nong Rangers in the end winning by four points in a thriller. They were a little bit lucky to get out of jail, but well done to Mark Wright and his team for finally holding on to a close one in the well, last quarter. speaking <laughs> of Mark Wright, those last few minutes, yeah. you saw him at the end of the court and you could just see visions of those other close games that they lost playing on his mind, but well done for getting over the line. Yeah, I think his life might have flashed before <laughs> his eyes for a few minutes there. Um, and another thriller on Friday night, it was a strange one with the Sydney Uni Flames taking on the Logan Thunder. The Thunder recorded the Flames, or registered for the Flames, their first loss for the season. The two-point margin um, makes it look strange, but it was actually 14 points with two minutes to go, and somehow Belinda Stowe and Alicia Poto got them back in, to within that close. Well, 14 points, and, and Alicia Poto shot 10 points mm. in less than two minutes to bring them to that two-point margin. So, you know, Karen Dalton would be... Um, you should be wondering why it was left to that long, um, you know, to make that sort of comeback. But great for Logan. They had that bye the yep. week before, and so they were really focused and ready to come and play. Kayla Francis was best for the Thunder with 23 points and 10 rebounds, while Belinda Snell had a lazy 36 <laughs> for the winners. Um, in the nation's capital, the Canberra Capitals beat the AIS relatively comfortably there, 91-55. to 55. Mariana Tolo was best for the Capitals with 25, and Sarah Blitzabs was best for the Institute with just 17 points. And then on Saturday night, oh sorry, the other game on, uh, on Friday night was between West Coast and Bulleen, and the West Coast Waves, they gave the Boomers a real fright. Well really, as the paper said, it was up to Liz Cambridge mm. to to form heroics all through the game and, and score. What did Liz score? 33, in 33 points in the end. Eight points. You know, uh, Perth beat um, Boleyn last year in Perth, so they might have gone into that game really confidently. Yeah, Rahani Cox is very good for the locals as well as Mel Melissa Marsh and Jasmine Hooper. They just didn't quite have enough of the firepower, but it's possible that they hurt the Boomers when they came up against Adelaide in a couple of days' time. But before we get to that, we'll have a quick look at the Bendigo and Townsville game. And speaking of sides being fatigued and a little bit hurt, um, it's possible, Laurie, that that's what happened with the Townsville fire because they never really were that close with the, in the game with the spirit. Well, they weren't, and it was um, sort of a, a game of halves for Bendigo. Certainly, Gab Richards dominated mm. the first half. Tess Madgen was fairly quiet, and then their roles were reversed, and Tess Madgen came out and had a blinder of a second half. But as you say, Darren, they were pretty comfortable the whole game, and that is with Christy Harrower 
only playing around 15 minutes. It was great for Bendigo to see Gabe Richards and Tess Magin in form. Gabe had 25 points and 8 rebounds. Tess Magin had 21. And interesting the comments from Bernie Harrow, their coach, during the week, saying that they were a bit disappointed with Tess's production the previous couple of weeks, and he sat down and had a heart-to-heart, and he described her as their superstar. Um, there's no doubt she's a player of the future, but uh, it, w- it was really good, I guess, for her as a young player to get the coach's vote of confidence. Well, Tess coming to Bendigo a couple of seasons ago has absolutely spurred on her game. And, mm. and it is because Bernie Hareward does have such good confidence in her. I love her range of uh, weapons now at the offensive end. And she has really got a scoring mentality, which she didn't have. And certainly in the absence of Christy Harrow, we've said this before, it's vital that Tess Madge and Deanna Smith step up. The final game for the weekend, as I mentioned a moment ago, was in Sunday on, with the Adelaide Lightning hosting the Bulleen Boomers. And a 10-point margin in the end looks comfortable for the Lightning, but it was anything but. Well, Boleyn came out. You know, you would never know they had had the game a, a couple of days before in West Coast, and they came out and absolutely blitzed the first quarter. And speaking to this, uh, a coach in Adelaide, it's, um, you know, their work rate wasn't great defensively, so, so they really upped that and uh, brought it back in um, at halftime. Then it was sort of, you know, point for point, and, and finally... With, again, only a couple minutes left, it's, it's a very close game, and they come out victors. Yeah, Susie had 37 points for the Adelaide Lightning leading them. And we've got the ladder here uh, with the Flames out on top. The Boomers are in third. They slip a little. Well, they don't slip any spots, Laurie, even though they lost that game. The Adelaide Lightning climbed to second. Well, just looking at that ladder compared to last week's, Dan, you can see it, it certainly tells the closeness of the competition. Last week, Dandenong was in fifth. They win a game, an important game, and drop to sixth. <laughs> that shows yeah. the, the, the closeness, Logan winning and taking their spot. So it's still very much up in the air, that uh, middle ranks. Yeah, and it is always a little bit of a jumble too, isn't it, when the teams have played odd numbers of games. Absolutely. And it makes it a little bit tricky. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, that's the end of our review for round seven. And now we're going to continue in our series of, uh, well, interviews that Catherine Murphy has been doing, catching up with some of the stars of the WNBL. So now it's over to Catherine. Thank you guys. Joining me now is Jessica Bibby from the Canberra Capitals. Jess, thank you so much for your time. You're a five-time champion, one of the most decorated players in the game. What would it mean to you to add another championship to your tally? It's why we play. Um, you know, you, you get that first taste of winning a championship and it's such a wonderful feeling to share with your teammates and, um, you know, the, the supporters and especially in a place like Canberra, the whole community gets behind you. So we're certainly looking forward to perhaps getting another, another opportunity to, to win a six this year or an eight for the club. Like a lot of the girls, you've played away from home. What have you taken from that? Yeah, look, you know, obviously when you get a chance to play overseas, there's, there's certain... Uh, certain different styles of basketball when you when you go overseas and play. So it's certainly Australian basketball is a, a hybrid of a few different a few different uh, styles. You know, you get the the athleticism and, and quickness of the American style and the and the size and the and the and the, the slow down uh, style that the, that the Europeans like to play. So we sort of have a little bit of a, a combination of the two. And um, you know, I, I think that's a strength of, of Australian basketball. And it's it's certainly great to be able to uh, learn from from uh, different styles when when you get to travel around the world. We do need to talk about your other favourite team it's not your team it's an AFL team reveal to us your passion for Carlton yeah look uh, it's it's, it's a joke amongst uh, us us girls in Canberra that you know I'm not the St Kilda school girl I'm the I'm the Carlton mum I'm I'm quite obsessed with with anything Chris Judd Uh, you know I certainly think that perhaps one day Rebecca Twigley's got something to be concerned about Um, but yeah love love the Blues and it was certainly heartbreaking as, as they lost to the Eagles this season but you know I'm already talking up 2012 as a Carlton Premiership you must have been absolutely gutted when Rebecca had that baby. Was that one of the worst days of your life? Or is he still... He's not off limits. It's still on. Yeah, He's look, the, there, there might have been a few tears shed um, seeing the wedding photos. Um, but it's certainly, you know, as, a, as an athlete, you've got that never-say-die attitude. And I certainly uh, um, am, am banking on, on that coming through in, in the years to come. If, if I ever get the opportunity to, to meet Chris Judd, I've, I've got about half a dozen signed jerseys um, over the years. So as I said, the Carlton mum has, has certainly been front and centre uh, getting some signatures from Chris Judd. But maybe one day I'll, I'll get to meet him and introduce myself. <laughs> Next time of me will probably be down at uh, Princess Park. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much and best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, uh, yeah, I think it's fair to say that Jess Bibby is a 
just a small fan of the Carlton Footy Club there, Lauren. Chris Judd, oh, look out. Well, she's, I don't know about a small fan. She seems fanatical to yeah, me, Darren. Yeah, without a doubt, I, Chris Judd. But just watch out for a very small blonde girl hanging around <laughs> Princess Park in the future. Uh, well, Catherine's working overtime, as she always does. And Catherine, what have you got for us in news this week? Thank you to Laurie and to Darren and to the Mo, which I think I'm going to refer to separately from now on. It'll be a big occasion when that gets shaved off and Laurie and I are certainly looking forward to it. But speaking of big occasions, Adelaide's Jo Hill plays her 300th game at the weekend. She spoke to our very own Laurie Chiswick about the highlights of her career so far. Joey Hill, 300th game coming up this weekend. Did you ever think way back in 1989 as a 16-year-old you would be celebrating your 300th game? No, I didn't. And obviously I didn't think I'd be playing at this level. You know, I just thought I was playing at a district level and, you know, for fun, just another sport to get into. And, you know, here I am today still playing. Now, if I can quickly recap your WNBL career, and it's very long. You started in 89 at North Adelaide, then went to the Institute, back to the Lightning, then you hurt your knee when you were over in France, back to the Capitals in 2003 where you played your 250th, off to Spain, then Townsville the last two seasons, and now back in Adelaide. Do you have any highlights from all those times, Joey? I guess winning the three championships in a row, so 94, 95 and 96 with Adelaide and then again in uh, 98 because a lot of people go through their career and, you know, maybe win one or don't win any at all. So I'm, I'm very lucky and privileged to be, you know, part of those championships. You'll be joining a very, very elite group of players, becoming only the ninth player to reach 300 games in the uh, history of the WNBL. Is there a chance that we'll see you try and surpass Lucille Bailey and Rachel Sporn's record of 377 games? No, I don't think so. I think, you know, I think this is my last year. You know, it's good to be back in, you know, obviously I was going to finish last year in Townsville and then when Bucks got the job and asked if I wanted to keep playing, um, I decided to do it being back in Adelaide and, you know, finish my career where it started. And, you know, and I guess the reasons why I was going to give up was my age being 38. Maybe it's time to, you know, step away. And But I guess people say, well, if you've still got the passion and enthusiasm, why not continue? Because you're, you're also a long time retired. So that was another reason. And being back home and, as I say, finishing off my career there. And that's what I always wanted to do, but never thought I'd have the opportunity. So I'm very lucky and I'm happy that I can do that. Well, Joe, congratulations on this wonderful milestone and good luck in today's or in your, this game coming up and for the rest of the season. Thank you. Well, she usually manages to sneak into my bulletin at some point and this week is no different. Bullying's Liz Cambage has been named Player of the Week after an absolutely stunning weekend for the Boomers. She scored a massive 33 points with 14 rebounds in the win over West Coast with an incredible 77% accuracy. Despite the Boomers' loss to Adelaide, she notched up 28 points as well as 9 rebounds and 3 blocks with an amazing 86% shooting accuracy. Congratulations to her. Another player who had a big weekend was Dandenong's import, Krista Phillips. She scored a massive 17 points. She was the top scorer, also the MVP. Despite leading by double figures for most of the night, the Rangers had to fight for their four-point win over Townsville. Here's what she had to say to the ABC after the dramatic win. It was a pivotal match for the Dandenong Rangers in round seven of the WNBL when they hosted the Townsville Fire. And after a series of heartbreaking losses, they were finally able to crack it for a close win. They defeated Townsville by four points in a thriller. One of their best was their starting centre, Krista Phillips, who had a bit of a topsy-turvy ride with form during the last couple of weeks, but she was at her very best in this match. And after the game, she caught up with Rachel Spawn. Krista, sigh of relief. Yeah, it was. I mean, we've lost a couple of close ones, and I'm not quite sure why we do this to ourselves, but it was important for us to get this one going into the second half of the season. I think it is important psychologically because you had such a magnificent start, but you're letting teams back into the game. Yeah, it seems to be one of our problems, and we're working really hard in practice trying to figure out how we can prevent that from happening because we're, we've, I think we've proven that we're just as good as every team in this league, but we've lost a couple of close ones, and that's the difference right now. And a great game yourself, 17 points, 10 boards, and you stayed out on the court, Krista. So didn't get into too much foul trouble. Yeah, you know, it's just a matter of trying to figure out what they're going to call, what they're not going to call, and trying to play kind of through that. Well, we enjoyed the game, Krista, so well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Finally, Logan Thunder had a massive night of celebrations at the weekend and it wasn't just because of their huge win over the previously undefeated Sydney Uni. It was also Rene Camino's birthday and it's fair to say the girls certainly let their hair down. Really hope they recover in time for the weekend. So a big happy birthday to her and good luck at the weekend. That is all from me. It's back to you guys. Well, thanks, Catherine, and yeah, some pretty serious celebrate. One thing about the Logan girls, they know how to celebrate. Well, they do, Darren, and actually I must add in that uh, it's probably not only Renee Camino's fault if they don't come up well, because it was also Kate McMeek and Rusko's birthday uh, on that same day, so uh, happy birthday to both of those girls. Yeah, indeed, and I'm not going to let slide what Catherine said right at the top of that bulletin about my moustache. Now, do you agree with her that this is a big moment, or it's going to be a big occasion? when? Because uh, this is one of our viewer questions, actually, from this week. Uh, a, a lady who calls herself nonsensible Kate on the Twitter <laughs> on the Twitter feed uh, wants to know what you think of the moment. Are you with Catherine? You reckon it's well, a big occasion? Well, I'm actually counting down to the end of November. I think it's nine <laughs> sleeps till we get the MOA. And we, we'd like people to put up their hand to see who actually wants to shave it off. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm feeling the same way as uh, Catherine. Well, as long as whoever wants to shave it off also wants to donate, jump onto movember.com.au because a fantastic cause promoting men's health issues. And please, everyone, get behind it. And, uh, well... Give that my mo may well not grow anymore, but actually be removed <laughs> very very soon. Now the other viewer question we had was actually from Catherine Carr this week, and she came up. Well, she asked a question, Laurie, about uh, the bookies. Um, they've got Dan in on Adelaide. Sorry, Bulleen and Adelaide as the two favourites for the championship at the moment, with Sydney and Dan in on just behind them. Uh, do you agree with that assessment? Do you think that's a fair assessment? I think certainly Adelaide's a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. I think Adelaide have a lot of depth. I think they're just improving week by week and showing their strength. So yes, um, Adelaide. I tipped Boleyn right from the beginning and purely the experience of Tom Marr. Having said that, Sydney, I don't know, maybe I'd be switching right now to um, Sydney. But what are your thoughts on that, Darren? Uh, I think Adelaide deserves to be favourite at the moment, uh, and particularly the way that Susie Bakovic is playing. 38 points last week, 37 this week. It's hard to see anybody in the competition that can stop her. Um, in a moment, we're going to be previewing their match with the Flames coming up this weekend, and I think that's going to tell us a lot. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that one. But please, thanks for those questions, and please, again, uh, we'll put up our details a little bit later on in the show with Facebook and Twitter, but stay in contact with us and make sure your, your questions get answered, whatever you want to talk about in the WNBL. All right, let's have a look at what's coming up in round eight. Two sides with buys, the Bulleen Boomers and the Canberra Capitals, and particularly important, I think, for, for Bulleen because Tom Mars is a bit worried with how they're going and wants them to hit the training track hard. So a big week for them off the track, I would imagine. But only five games this weekend. The AIS taking on the Townsville Fire is the first one. And, Laurie, it's, it's difficult at the moment for the AIS, isn't it? Well, I pity the team that uh, faces Townsville after three losses in a row. Chris Lucas will go away from that weekend, look at the areas that they need to address, and uh, watch out AIS. Yeah, and our match for broadcast this week on ABC Television is the Logan Thunder hosting the West Coast Waves. The Thunder with a fantastic win last weekend, obviously, and they'll be looking to make two in a row. Well, we talked about um, whether it's a good thing having a bye mm. and an easier game, and they certainly showed against Sydney that it was it was good for them. And they went into that game trying to talk about uh, having a little mini goal session, and that was to win two out of their next three. So they've beaten Sydney, they've got West Coast, which is very winnable for them, and then Townsville's their third game. So they'll want to get this um, game against West Coast. All right, let's get serious now, and we'll look at the other game on Friday night, which is going to be broadcast right around Australia on WNBL Radio. Make sure you log on to the WNBL website and catch up with the guys giving you that coverage. The Adelaide Lightning hosting the Sydney Uni Flames. And Laurie, this match is so important in, in so many ways. I'll start off by saying it's for head-to-head -head as well, which if we know at the end of the season, if teams are tied, whoever has won the head-to-head -head battle between those teams in the season finishes higher on the ladder. In round two, they met, and the Flames beat Adelaide by five points. How are the Lightning going to reverse the result? Well, Adelaide would go into that very confident about uh, beating Boleyn and where they stand and, and uh, you know, going into Sydney knowing they have to get that game to, to win the head-to-head. -head. I'd like to quote Karen Dalton and, and her preparation for this mm. game. She's gone, uh, Adelaide are deep, they're talented, they're versatile, organized, and, of course, they have Susie Batkovich. Yep. But, again, like Carrie Graff, Susie played for her for many years, so... Earlier on in that second round, they doubled, they triple teamed her, so it'll see if they remain to be seen if they use those same tactics. And it was interesting in round two because Susie scored 20 points. Um, she scored 11 of the first 13 points in the match, 
and then she didn't score again until almost three quarter time. So the fl- I don't know if that was a, a, a the Flames' defense was fantastic or whether it was something that Adelaide were doing inefficiently that they've now been able to rectify because she's had 37 and 38 the last two weeks. Well, there's no doubt her shooting's improved and yep. improved, as has Belinda Snell. We know when they Belinda played in that game, her shooting wasn't great no. until the last few minutes. Well, now she's chalked up giant numbers too, mm. so... You know, it'll be a battle of the Olympians and, and um, who's going to uh, play better out of those group of uh, fantastic players. Well, if you're in Sydney, make sure you get down to the Sydney University and check out that game. And if you're not there, tune into WNBL Radio on the WNBL website. The other pivotal match this weekend, Laurie, is on Saturday night right here in Melbourne. The Dandenong Rangers hosting the Bendigo Spirit. Remarkably, this is just the first time that these sides have actually met this year, the first of three meetings for the season. So it's important they get off to a good start. Well, again, Bendigo coming to Dandenong, Dandenong off that, uh, you know, it was a good win against Townsville, mm. obviously sitting in second spot, so, so they'll be feeling pretty good. Bendigo, again, you know, it's the Christy Harrower factor, yep. how much will she play? Uh, uh, you know, I think she's feeling a little bit better. She pulled up well after that game and hoped to be training this week. But it's a vital game. It's, it's, a, you know, it's one of those local derbies, so to speak, and um, real important. Bendigo won two of their three matchups last year, but it was far from easy. They won by two points in one. Sorry, they lost by two in one, and they won in the other, another one in overtime. Um, it's, it's interesting that, again, it's a bit like last week, I, th- I think, anyway. You're the expert. You'll tell me if I'm wrong. Where Danny Nong, who had that star quality, seemed to be coming up a, against a side that prides itself on a real team game. Well, we know that Bendigo is all about executing and, and making the extra pass, hitting the open player. Um, I, I think they match up very well, um, this, this, these two teams, and that obviously shows from the results from last year. But certainly, both coaches will be well prepared. They'll be able to see lots of tapes of each other, even though it's only the first time they've played. And So I'm really looking forward to that game. Are you prepared to tell me who you think is going to win those two games? Darren, you know what? At the beginning of this broadcast, I was going to turn it around and ask you what you thought your tips were for our two important games. So I'm going to stick to that. And our two important games, the Sydney one and this one, what are your tips? Uh, Adelaide and Danny Nong, because I'm still worried about uh, Christie's fitness. So we're going to move right along and look at the last game and say Townsville and West Coast, that will finish off the weekend's matches. Um, it's really a tough weekend for the Waves. That Queensland road trip does nobody any favours. Well, it doesn't. And the only thing I can say about West Coast is they know they're not going to make the playoffs. Mm. They might be trying to... They'll be playing fairly loose. They, they had a good game against Boleyn, as we saw. So you never know. But certainly I don't think Townsville will give them that uh, luxury of getting the W. All right. Thanks, Laurie. Thanks for your thoughts. And thanks for your company at home. Again, please stay in contact with us on WNBL ITV and the WNBL generally through our Facebook page and Twitter. And uh, Laurie, it's been wonderful. Looking forward to another great week of WNBL action. It just gets better each week, Darren. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week.